The version of Windows we purchased only provided us with a Windows 11 license key and no physical media. So we're going to need to download a copy of Windows and create a bootable installation disk. However, as we can download a copy of Windows from the Microsoft website and then use a piece of software to create a bootable installation disk, this should not be a major issue. As you can see, there are many versions of Windows that we can download. However, the version that we will be using is the disk image of Windows 11. While downloading a copy of Windows is free and the process very simple, we will need to confirm which language we want to use and we will only be able to use the 64-bit version of Windows 11. We now need to wait for a copy of Windows to download to our computer. So that we can install Windows onto our new framework laptop, we will need to transfer the Windows 11 file that we just downloaded onto a bootable USB flash drive. To do this, we're going to use a free program called Rufus, which can be found on the internet. As you will see in a moment, the reason we like Rufus is that it makes it super easy to take a disk image of an operating system and make it bootable from a USB flash drive. Now that we've downloaded both a copy of Windows 11 and a copy of Rufus, let's make a bootable instance of Windows. As Rufus does not need to be installed onto our computer, we can just open the file that we've downloaded. If we insert our USB flash drive into our computer, Rufus should automatically detect it. Then if we select the ISO image of Windows 11 that we downloaded, When we click Start, Rufus will make our USB flash drive into a self-booting Windows installer. It's worth noting that it took us around 8 minutes for Rufus to create our Windows installer disk. We also recommend that if possible, you use a USB 3.0 flash drive, as these drives have faster data transfer speeds. With our Windows installation drive now ready, we can connect it to our framework laptop and switch on our computer for the first time. One of the nice touches that we noticed was that because the laptop cannot detect an operating system on its hard drive, it will default to checking to see if a USB drive is available. So having detected our USB flash drive, it now automatically starts the process of installing Windows by displaying the Windows Setup Wizard. After checking the installation language, time and currency format, and the keyboard layout, when we select Next, we are prompted to install Windows. After a short delay, we're asked for our Windows activation key. However, as we can install Windows 11 without entering the key, we're going to select I don't have a product key. The reason we did this was because we wanted to make sure that our computer was functioning correctly before we activated Windows. We are now prompted to select the operating system that we wish to install. So as we have a Windows 11 Pro product key, we're going to select Windows 11 Pro. In order to install Windows, we have to accept Microsoft's license agreements and its terms of service. Finally, we need to choose the type of installation that we wish to make, along with where we would like to install Windows. With Windows installed onto our computer, the first thing that we noticed was how hard the fans were working and how warm the case of our computer had become. While these are two factors that we do not expect to see on a high-end laptop, we do have confirmation that the fans and the computer's cooling system is actually working. So let's see if we can fix both issues by installing the correct hardware drivers onto our computer. If we open a web browser and do a search for Framework Laptop Drivers 11th Gen, we will be taken to the BIOS and driver page for our computer. Let's download the beta driver bundle for Windows 11 and the latest version of the BIOS for our computer. 
as we also noticed that the function keys on our keyboard were not registering correctly and the cooling fans were still making a lot of noise, let's start by installing the driver bundle. While the framework driver bundle that we downloaded was a little out of date, by installing these drivers we should be able to stabilize our computer. Then if we continue to encounter problems, we can visit the Intel website and download more up-to-date drivers to deal with any specific issues that we might have. As you can see, the driver bundle will install a lot of Intel drivers, so after the drivers have been installed, we will need to reboot our computer. After the reboot, everything seems a little more snappy, with the touchpad performing better and the function keys on the keyboard working correctly. However, the fan is still incredibly loud and the laptop a little too warm to the touch. Let's try installing the latest version of the computer's BIOS. When we start the installer, we are shown the current version of the BIOS that our computer is using, along with the version that we're about to install. We are then given a number of warnings to comply with before we start the update. After selecting OK, the computer will reboot and install the updated BIOS. With an updated BIOS, our framework laptop finally started to perform the way that we expected. However, we still encountered a couple of issues that required some basic troubleshooting. The first issue we found was that our Wi-Fi card was not initiating for a couple of minutes until after we'd logged into Windows. As it turns out, this was a bug with the beta Wi-Fi drivers that framework were using. So we fixed the problem by installing the latest Wi-Fi drivers from Intel. The other issue that we found with our framework laptop, while not really a bug, but an annoying feature of Windows, is something called Windows Fast Startup. Windows Fast Startup is a service that prevents a computer from completely powering down when you switch it off. This is so that Windows can boot faster the next time that you switch it on. However, this means that your computer will slowly drain battery power even though it's meant to be switched off. So unless you leave your laptop plugged into the mains, the next time that you come to use your computer, its battery will not have a full charge. So in order to maintain battery life, we disabled fast startup. It's also worth noting that in order for a single charge to last most of the day, we also had to enable the battery saver function built into Windows 11. Finally, now that Windows is working the way that we want, we can activate Windows using our product key. In Windows 11, if we open Settings and scroll down to About, at the bottom of the About panel is the option Product Key and Activation. By selecting this option, we can enter our Windows Product Key and activate Windows. As this process went without a hitch, Buying a Windows license key from a third party did save us a considerable amount of money. Finally, remember the Anchor 6 and one USB hub that we also purchased. Well, compared to Framework's expansion cards, buying the 6-in-1 was definitely a cheaper way to give our Framework laptop a HDMI port, two additional Type-C USB ports, two additional USB 3 ports and a 1 gigabit Ethernet port. So if you are considering a framework laptop, we recommend that you only buy the USB-C and USB 3 expansion cards from Framework, then to get additional connectivity, use something like an Anchor 6-in-1 USB hub. 